how do you really eat to get the most out of your life? And can you eat to increase your quality of life today? We know already that you, if, if you eat healthy, you'll uh, stay away from heart attacks and diabetes and cancer perhaps, but can you increase your quality of life today or tomorrow? And the answer is yes. I personally experienced 23 years ago um, that building blocks in food makes a matter. It's, it makes a huge difference for your immune system, your brain function, your moods, and your memory. And it's not about complicated diets at all. It's about simple food swaps. And uh, I, I started uh, this uh, giving lectures uh, when I experienced this. I needed to tell uh, every, the whole world about this. It started with Peter getting born uh, 23 years ago. He was born three weeks before due date on my final exam in surgery. And he was seriously ill. He had a viral infection in his body and his brains, and he, he was brought to an incubator. He didn't breathe well, very well, and he had his virus in his body and his brains. It gave him uh, an encephalitis, epilepsy. It gave him um, uh, ADHD, and it destroyed his growth hormone. Uh, it was a virus, so the doctors told me just to wait for him getting well, and I'm a really bad waiter. Uh, I, I wanted uh, him to uh, have some antibiotics, but then it had to be a bacterial infection, and it wasn't, so we had to go home. After weeks and months, uh, a very old aunt called me, and she said, when I was little, a sip of fresh cream could strengthen your immune system, and that hasn't stopped working, despite you having those uh, fancy antibiotics of yours. So you better look into food for Peter. But I didn't believe her. As a doctor, we needed everything randomized and double-blinded and published in peer-reviewed journals, so I ran to the library. And I was astonished and shocked, because I found a lot of studies about vitamins and minerals, about antioxidants, and I had never heard of them. During six years of medical school, only two hours of nutrition, I ha hadn't heard about the antibiotics and how food can strengthen the immune system. So I started to translate the studies into recipes and made food for Petter, and it made him well. And I needed to tell my patients about this, uh, and I couldn't uh, tell one and one, so I made the lectures and the books, and I developed a powerful tool. It's the story about the cell factory. It's a metaphor, um, so uh, it helps you understand, and it makes you understand the simple food swaps and why they work. Food meets uh, in your mouth, it meets the enzymes. There, the digestion starts. And the enzymes cut your food into small pieces, and the pieces, they're transported down to your guts. In the guts, they meet the bacteria in your intestines. And actually, they make up more than 90% of your body. They outnumber you. You're just 10%. You're living in symbiosis with these bacteria, and you de depend on the work that they're doing. So you better keep them healthy. There are 400 different families, and they have lots of workloads. They paint the walls in the guts with smart fatty acids. They cut the food into even smaller pieces, pieces that can be absorbed. They produce a lot of messengers, like neurotransmitters, transmitters like serotonin that they send up to your brain and affect the brain and the way you're thinking. And that's why they're called your second brain. And they even program your immune system. That's why they're teachers in my pictures. They're like small professors. And they will work all day and all night for you if you eat the food that they need to stay healthy. Down in your guts, you also have the harmful ones. And they are really, they're sleeping, um, but they can be 
you can wake them up with the refined white carbohydrates, you know, like rice and flour and pasta and sugar. You need them to sleep because if they wake up, they take over the control. They start programming your immune system, making your immune cells just find up crazy things, make inflammation in your skin and lungs and even make you depressed and decrease your memory. So you'd like them to keep sleeping. So that's where the food swaps come in. in. You'll swap the, sh the yogurt with, filled with sugar uh, with Greek yogurt. You'll eat a lot of uh, root vegetables because helpful ones, they love the root vegetables. And you also swap the sugar, the refined sugar that wakes up the harmful ones to honey. Honey makes the helpful ones really strong and it tastes as sweet and even better. And when you make them healthy, those bacteria, they'll cut the food into tiny pieces and the pieces will be absorbed in your bl bloodstream and it will go to the factories, you know, the cells, the rest of you, the 10%. And this is one of those cells. Let's imagine this is a brain cell. When I was younger, back in 1990, the brain cells, they just died. Now we know that they're renewing and they're even dividing but they're depending on you eating the building blocks that they need to renew and divide. And this is a factory, a brain cell. You have 130 billion brain cells and millions of them renewing every second. They need walls, they need windows, they need workers, and if this was a car factory, they'd need tires, windows, doors, and every sorts of different parts for the car to make a whole car. If you just deliver tires, you know, your workers end up with packing tires, sending them away instead of building cars. Let's go into the brain cell factory and have a look. The brain cell factory has walls made of saturated fatty acids. It makes great paneling. You'll have windows made of zigzag-shaped unsaturated fatty acids that let the raw material in and the neurotransmitters that the workers make will uh, pass through the windows easily, like omega-3 and omega-9. You'll eat avocado to get those omega acids. You'll eat fat fish and you'll stick to the extra virgin olive oil. It makes great windows. In the middle of the factory, you have a fire stove. Actually, you have lots of them. They're your mitochondria, but let's think about one. When you burn something, you'll have sparks. And in earlier days, we thought that the sparks were just one kind of sparks. They were free radicals or oxidants. Now we know they're all kinds of different sparks and that they have different colors and that different colors, antioxidants in vegetable, fruits, berries, herbs and spices can put them out. So when I was little, we could have blueberries we thought, and put every spike out, but now we know that we need the whole rainbow of vegetables, fruits, and berries. And if you pick two or three colors, you're safe. Or you could pick a green color, because in the fall, you see that the green leaves on the trees hides different colors, both orange, yellow, and red, and so does the leafy, the green, leafy greens. Here you see the workers. In the brain factory, you have the B vitamin workers, and they're dividing into teams. So if you were the workers tonight, you'll be B6, 9, and 12, 6, 9, and 12. You see those workers in the pictures? They're bodies, and they cooperate making the neurotransmitters. It makes serotonin to keep the body happy. It makes noradrenaline to make you stay focused and make you want things. And it also makes dopamine that makes you euphoric, and that's a nice feeling. 
So if you like lots of those B vitamins, you uh, wouldn't do that well with only B12 showing up from egg or meat. You also need B6 from the vegetables and the whole grain. It makes a team and they die when they make you happy. So you need new teams all, all, all day um, showing up. So the swap tricks to ensure you have those teams is to stay away from white refined carbs because they're stripped of teams. The teams are in the bran. You know, the B vitamins, work, uh, they stay in the bran. And if you take away the bran, you have only the starch. So uh, you'll eat grains instead of cornflakes. You'll eat whole grain bread instead of white bread. It uh, makes you loaded with workers and tools. And you also swap the white rice, even in sushi, with barley or quinoa. Back to the cell factory in the front, you see the workers packing neurotransmitters. And uh, they're called messengers, different kinds like dopamine that makes you euphoric. And the messengers are made of proteins, so you also need proteins for your factories to function. And proteins you have in meat and egg and different kinds of uh, food, but you need different, you need a variety of protein delivered. And why do you need a variety? Um, it's because proteins are made of amino acids in the same way as words are made of letters. So that when you're writing uh, a text, you need different numbers of the different letters. When you're producing proteins, different kinds like muscle fibers, hormones, or messengers, you need different numbers of the different letters. So that's best if you uh, uh, live on a variety of proteins. You swap the hot dog for grass-fed meat. You uh, eat uh, eggs. You know, every building block is inside an egg. Every building block that a chicken needs to develop with brain, eyes, bone, skin, and feathers. And you swap the fish uh, sticks with the, the wild-caught uh, fish. So then we're back to the cell factory. You have ensured with simple swaps, uh, food swaps, uh, the cell to be spoiled with workers, mineral tools, fatty acid, antioxidants, and smart fatty acids for windows and doors. And um, like I experienced, I have experienced for the last 23 years that Petter grew up healthy, simple swap uh, tricks, uh, food swaps could uh, also make you healthier and make you uh, stronger, uh, your, strengthen your immune system, your brain function, and your memory. And it's not complicated. Even I can do it, you know, working uh, as a doctor with six children. It's easy and it doesn't take time. Nobody can go back and make a new beginning, but you can all. If you're inspired, you know, you can all use those simple food swaps and sure make a new ending. Thank you.